I guess we can start. Good afternoon to everybody and thank you for joining today's webinar on how Hello. Hello. I think you're on mute. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. I can hear you. Yeah. Can you Hello. see me? Yes, I can see you. Fantastic. Hello. Here, but not see. You cannot see me? Nope. I see the slide. Right there. Can anybody else see me? Yes, we can yes. see you. Yes, I see you. Yes. yes, we can see you. We can see you. Just I'm go. the one waving Thank with you. his hands. <laughs> okay. I see. Okay. So I guess um, you can, well, hopefully most of you, if not all of you, can see and hear me. Uh, let me welcome you again to today's uh, workshop on how to find a job through networking. My name is Carsten Zutov. I'm a member of the management team of von Rundstedt. Uh, some of you know that we support individuals in their um, career aspirations. So, so we uh, help people identify how to position themselves in the job market, how to storytell their successes, and then to ultimately land the job of their dreams. And one important aspect of that process is uh, this whole dimension of networking, which is what I would like to focus on in the next hour and a half. May I suggest that we try and make this as interactive as possible because uh, in the times of Corona, where everything seems to happen online, life tends to be a little um, quieter and a bit more in, um, reclusive. So because everything is happening online, may I ask you to just uh, ask your questions live? So by unmuting and just speaking your question or you're making a comment. Of course, you can also type your questions or your comments into the chat. But if I could um, articulate and ask in your direction, I would prefer that you speak up so that, whole, that makes the whole thing a bit more interactive. My aim for today is to share a couple of um, insights, a bit of theory about how to network, but also I'd like to share um, some tips and tricks because uh, I have not only built a number of international, even global communities, but also, of course, I've helped um, in excess of several thousand individuals through networking to find a job. So let's try and make this as interactive as possible. Let's go. First question. Is there any specific aspect that you would like me to cover today? Uh, anything that you would um, want to get an answer for? Um, if so, please say it or mention it in the chat. Um, if I, yeah, one of the things uh, about networking, what for me is always um, difficult is um, how to build a contact and how to keep a contact. Build and keep a contact, okay. Yeah. Great. Who was that? Patricia. Patricia. Anything else? Uh, Michaela speaking. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Hi, Carsten. Hi. Um, one of my questions, so I, I enjoy networking. I truly enjoy networking um, when it's for the pleasure of spending time with people. I fall to a very inefficient position when is a networking with purpose. And I don't know how to connect between the pleasure of networking and the purpose of networking. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Yep. Here is, uh, I don't know if you hear me, it's Simone speaking. Yes, we hear you, Simone. Um, for me, the biggest issue is that many, many times I really have the, the feeling that I'm not welcome to ask for you know, I'm telling, I'm, I'm trying to network a lot. And then as soon as I say, I, I, I don't have a job anymore. So people try, I, they, they, they have a big problem with it. And if you ask, do you, if you know anything, they, 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 they become very shy and, oh, I'm sorry, I would not see anything. So I always have the feeling that 
I'm a I'm more of a problem, if I may, uh, if I may just say. I understand that. And you are not the only one to have experienced that. I'll, I'll yeah. touch upon that. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Uh, this is Hassan speaking. Can you hear yes, me? Hassan. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm joining the colleagues. That's exactly the point. So when it's, it's when it's about talking about nice weather or traveling or something, networking is, is is nice and everybody's listening. But as soon as it comes to the point, I'm now in a need. I need some support to get a new job or something like that. You see people not active anymore, not willing to chat anymore. How how do you transform this networking from being just here to chat for? nothing to maybe if I need you, I can also count on you. And, 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 and uh, it's a mutual relationship. The same goes with me as well. If they need me, I can be for them. Excellent. Uh, Very, I, have, yes. I have a question. This is Rania speaking. I, I put it in the chat. Um, good morning, everyone. For me, Thanks. the challenge of networking um, is really nowadays, you know, with the social media and not being able to go to events. Although, I mean, there are lots of webinars and I think it's great to, 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 be, to have access to content nowadays, but um, to network via LinkedIn. Also, I have like a, a network of LinkedIn that's really wide, but yeah, I mean, yeah. How, how do you network via LinkedIn with people you, 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 you know a little only, you know? So yeah, that's my, my challenge is really like through social media and, um, in, in current times. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Good. Uh, Mark, <clears throat> yes. let me just some question, Mark, Mark speaking. I had a very, very good experience via networking and actually found a job via networking. And uh, I'd say the people were quite helpful, which was kind of very positive and surprising to me. But the question I'm having is, as it was noted before, the transition to I'm actively looking for a job opposed to I have a job, but I won't, won't still continue doing networking because you never know what might pop up and you never know what is going to happen on the job market. So while having a job, how to continue networking, this is my kind of uh, difficulty or keeping contact. Uh, Karsten, this is the... Yeah. Can I just ask a question? Uh, hey, Rota. Yeah, hi, Karsten. <laughs> this is Dorota Świetlicka. Um, I'm um in kind of a spot when i just set up a startup so i'm in i think in a little bit different position of all participants but um my question to you uh, um as a company like von Rundstedt is are you doing anything just to um work with um companies or for example in the HR department just to a little bit shape them so when the people are calling uh, to HR asking okay hey guys is this um, ad which I just saw right now on the LinkedIn still available they just don't treat us as that I'm sorry for being very very bad about the, like a piece of shit and um, they're just um, uh, letting us go. So the question is if you were, because you work with looking people at the moment, right, at this webinar. But my question is, you know, I work also with, for example, with companies, with HR departments, with HR people to just shape a little bit this world. Because I remember when I was actively looking for a job some time ago, um, it was a nightmare and I, I just, um, um, I was just trying to, um, revert this into kind of fun and then just, um, set up a club of losers, for example, something like this, but, um, we were treated very badly by this HR department. So the question is maybe not relevant, maybe how to make a network, but how to, um swallow a f you know the frog of just being um treated like yeah not mm, with no dignity mm -hmm. so that's okay. that's my question to you it's the topic it's not a question it's kind of a topic somehow you know just maybe we will have time to discuss this 
maybe you have the same experience and I did have, uh, but uh, it was really at the beginning very hard and yeah. very tough. Let, let, me, let me start with this point, Dorota, because I wanted to uh, quickly introduce myself to, um, to the what, 130 people online. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't know me. Um, and I think what I, what I have done in the last 10 years probably is relevant um, because I'm going to use that also as an example, as my own personal learning for today's workshop. And so I'm going to start with your point, Dorota. Um, I became an entrepreneur eight years ago. And I remember um, when I first interacted with CEOs to sell the products of my company, um, and these products or services are in the, in the area of social impact, human progress, and collaboration. I would get the feedback from several of these CEOs, um, like, well, Karsten, you seem like a pretty cool guy, but what you're trying to do there sounds a lot like holding hands and singing Kumbaya. So I felt, um, I felt un non-understood, uh, disrespected, um, and I felt that something in my own communication wasn't right. In fact, uh, in that same, same time frame, I went after private equity funding, and it took me way over a year to get the money because the idea for my company was very clear in my head, but what came out of my mouth wasn't clear enough for the investors to say, well, hallelujah, here's my money, that's a great idea. So I, underst I understood the needs to be very specific in terms of formulating my ask and formulating also what I stand for. And I also understood that, uh, that companies, um, uh, or investors, I should say, would differentiate between what they call headache pills and vitamin pills, on the other hand. So vitamin, uh, headache pills being companies that solve a headache in a certain market. And by being, being so, they are an investment opportunity that is interesting. Whereas a vitamin pill is a nice to have, but I'm not really that sick kind of thing. So in a job search situation or in a networking situation, it's important to make it clear to the other people who you are, what you stand for, and that talking to you, being with you, and actually maybe even working with you is relevant. So that's kind of the, the red thread that I'm gonna try and weave to today's uh, webinar, which by the way, I want to not forget to tell you, which we are recording to make this um, available for a lot larger audience um, later on. Okay, let's, let's start. I'm gonna start with, um, maybe. I'm gonna start with a quote that um, I feel is very relevant. Uh, and that is that since basically early childhood, we get taught that it's all about taking. All our life is about taking. It's about my math grade. It's about my education. It's about my job, my car, my bonus. It's all about taking. The problem though with networking is that it requires giving. So it's a 180 degrees flip towards what we typically do in our everyday life. And that is why the hundreds and hundreds of people that I work with every year to teach them how to network find it so incredibly difficult to perspective change and actually to realize uh, a networking, a networking is a key capability, but it's also something that requires giving rather than taking. I'm not talking about anything esoteric here, but I'm, I'm talking about giving, sharing um, into the network, not expecting anything in return, but doing this because that's just who we are. We just give into the network and the power that the network then produces is unbelievable. And I've seen this now in my, in my own situation for the last 10 years. I give into one direction and then out of a totally different direction that I never, never knew existed, something comes that I never imagined. But I don't give into one direction because I'm expecting something from, from somebody else. I just give because that's just who I want to be and who I want to be perceived. There's a, fa there's a um, fabulous book about uh, giving and taking by an author called Adam Grant. Some of you might have heard me talk about him. He's a professor at Wharton Business School in uh, Philadelphia. The book is a global bestseller. And so what he, what he analyzed was that on, the, on, a, on a vector of performance in different companies, you would find at the lower end of the performance spectrum, so the underperformers, you would find what he would call givers. People who would help other people, and be available for other people if they need it, and they didn't have enough time for their own stuff, which is why they underperformed. On the other hand of the spectrum, so the high performers, interestingly enough, he also found 
givers. So these people also gave and gave and gave, and then as a consequence, were supported by a wave from other people which took them to high performance. Now this is an interesting fact. So you find the high performance on either end of the spectrum. And then of course you have what he would call takers. People that we all know, people that are good with their elbows, they're trying to create space for themselves. Um, they kind of make sure that everybody sees them and notices them. And actually um, he argues that in a world of increasing transparency and globalization, companies are gonna be increasingly reluctant to be associated with these takers because it might not fit to the profile that they want to present in the job market. And then there's a third category that he calls, that Anne Grant calls matchers. And these are people who give, well, but they actually give because they want to get something. And we are allergic um, against those people. We don't like that people are friendly because they actually want to get something in return. So what I would like to, like to emphasize here and, and, and get you to reflect about is, is this idea of giving as a prerequisite to building a network and to sustaining a network, irrespective of whether you need the network now or whether you might need the network in a, in a couple of months or whether you might never, never need the network uh, ever. I'll move on. You just stop me or you just basically unmute and, and, and ask me a question, make a comment if you want to, okay? I think actually you're, you're taking on the, the very central thing of, of your talk today because when I listen to some of the, the issues coming up when we are asking for, for leads and jobs, I think when we do that too directly, people are getting the expectation that we expect them to give us something. So we are asking for something. And I think we need to turn the situation around, right? Yes. So that, yeah. Okay, thank you. So the, um, there's, there's nothing wrong with the question, um, dear networking contacts, I'm looking for a new job, can you help me? The thing is, the human beings, the way, the way that I have experienced human beings is that we, we typically want to help, but we don't want to help when we feel overwhelmed and we don't know what to do. And the question, do you have a job for me, typically is so big that people are afraid and they shut up or they, they, they shut off and then they retract. It's too confrontational, I guess. Because typically people don't, don't have a job somewhere. There, there might be jobs in their organizations or maybe in organ other organizations that they know, but they might not have thought about that now. Plus they also don't know you necessarily well enough to say, ah, um, she could fit to that job that I found over there. And because they don't want to look silly, they typically retract. So my recommendation would be not to ask it this way, um, but we'll come to, come to um, ways to do this later on in the presentation. Um, as I said, I work with hundreds of people every year. Um, I stop count uh, 4,000 plus people that I've helped find a job in the last couple of years. And I realize that most people, I don't know, 98% plus have a natural resistance to networking. There's a high degree of discomfort and that typically is the result of not really knowing what to say. People don't like to be exposed uh, to networking situation, irrespective of whether they are extroverts or introverts, irrespective of whether they are thinkers or feelers. That doesn't make a difference. Typically, networking is an out of comfort zone situation. And oftentimes what we see, what I see when I go and train uh, clients by taking them to networking occasions, uh, where I confront them with a, with a real life networking situation is that um, they tend to clock or to, to flock with other people that they know and they spend the entire evening with people that they already know. They drink a couple of glasses of Prosecco and have a couple of sandwiches and then they go home having wasted a lot of time and an opportunity. And the reason is they, they don't know what to say. They actually don't know how to start a conversation. And we'll get to that. I like to do a role play uh, with a couple of volunteers at the end of the, uh, of the session today. So you can already think whether you want to be a, one, of the, one of the volunteers. The thing is, we don't know how to start a conversation. We don't know how to maintain a conversation and we don't know how to close a conversation. And then we don't know how to approach people and get on. And all that against the backdrop of the fact that networking is a key skill today. And I truly believe that networking will become an existentially important skill tomorrow. 
One of the few things that the human being can still do better than a computer, apart from, let's say, being an entrepreneur, having emotional intelligence and starting a company, is to network. And so this is a skill that unfortunately does not get trained in school, it does not get trained at university, and it doesn't get trained at companies, at least not really in a professional way. And suddenly you need it and you realize, damn, I don't know how to do it and I'm feeling discomfort. I worked with a senior executive, um, head of HR of a large company a couple of years ago. It's not true, two years ago. And she said to me, ah, you know, I don't want to go and network. You know, I don't have a job at the moment. Um, I'm a nobody. Uh, I don't know what to say. And I said to her, hang on, what do you mean a nobody? You're the same person that you were a couple of months ago when you still had the job. Yes, but I don't have a job now. I said, well, if that's going to change. You're going to have a job again in a couple of months time. You're still the same person. So I asked her, could you please um, reflect back or rem remember a year and a half ago when you were still in the job? And she said, yes, I can do that. And then I said to her, would people call you for networking uh, reasons and ask you for your help? And she said, yeah, sure, all the time. And I said, so how did you feel about this? And she answered, nothing, it was all fine, it was natural. And I said, see, if you felt that way, I can guarantee you that the others will feel exactly the same way. So there's no reason to feel discomfort it's not that you're asking for a petition, that you're a beggar, that you're asking for some kind of philanthropical mercy. In a situation where you're looking for a job, in a situation where you want to network, in a situation where you find investors or whatever, it's not a question of a unilateral ask. You're giving something in return. And this is something that I think is really important to understand. You're not a, a beggar, you're not asking for mercy. You're offering something, contact, your own capabilities, whatever, maybe in return for something else. Now, obviously, I'm going to skim through a couple of, couple of things here. Um, um, I'd like to actually spend the, the vast part of, of today's session actually on role playing. And I know that this is uncomfortable for a few people, but we just learned that networking is a discomfort for pretty much anybody anyway. So I'm going to skim through a couple of theoretical aspects. Body language, of course, it's an important aspect to, to consider. Um, obviously, uh, the way that you approach a person in terms of upper body, in terms of, um, let's say, fa facial expression, uh, in terms of voice, um, and in terms of micro expressions. Now, while I believe that you are aware of um, the aspect of body language, I'm not sure that you are familiar with this term micro expression. So I'd like to actually spend just a few moments explaining this to you. So what happens is that there are um, about seven different types of micro expressions in your face that get triggered by a subconscious reaction. So these micro expressions could be, for instance, um, uh, disgust or um, uh, anxiety or frustration or anger and so on. So the, the muscles in your face react to a subconscious reality and you see this in the, in the face. And these are oftentimes split second reactions. You just see that the mouth drops for a split second or the, um, the, the uh, forehead um, um, is, is uh, how do you say, um, frowned or something in the eyes is, is happening. And then these are fantastic opportunities to detect a certain reaction on the person that you're talking to. You need to understand these things. You need to actually, um, as you go into networking, you need to learn how to not just um, gain content from the person that you are talking to, and we'll, we'll study this in a, in a minute, but also you need to understand what your own body language will, how the body language will impact the person that you're talking to, but also you need to learn how to read the other people. And that is something that, again, I, I find um, not being a very, very visible strength in many people. Because we are so overly occupied to send information in a networking situation, in brackets, I would recommend in networking situations more to gain information rather than to send information. But because we are so overly occupied with sending information, we are overly, uh, let's say, captivated in our left brain and we don't have enough awareness or energy to observe what is happening in the people that we talk to, both in terms of body language or in terms of voice and in terms of micro expressions. 
I'll stop here and see if you have any questions about body language. If, if it's Dorota, if I may add to what you have said, I recently was recording a pitch for my startup or web summit, which, which is going to start this week. And guys, I just made literally 300 copies of the recording because of this micro, uh, micro kind of expressions, yes, on my face and also on my shoulders, you know, so um, it was so visible that I'm stressed recording that things, but uh, I had to record two others later on and, you know, by this, this, this exercise uh, from recording the, the first one was so robust, so helpful that uh, recording the next one was really easy. You know, I just spent yeah, literally like 15 minutes just to record the thing. So people see every movement of our muscles of on, on our face, you know, and this is really the only way for me, for example, to just get rid of that stuff was just to record. So I put a selfie, I put an iPhone, and I just uh, was recording and practicing uh, things, recording myself. And literally, it was like more than 300, uh, just to get to, to the point which I, uh, where I want to be. So that's my comment. Yeah, yeah. Austin, uh, are everyone- Austin, Can you hear me, Zvinka? Uh, I, I have a question for you. Regarding the micro expression, can you go a bit more in details? Mm -hmm. Like you said, there are like seven type of uh, seven triggers. Can you give the exhaustive list and then how we see? Can you be a bit more specific? Yes, um, and and there's a um, what we'll do um, to the to the uh, email list that is uh, that has signed up for today's session. We're gonna sh we're gonna share a seven minute YouTube video. Uh, which I've used um, a lot of times in my workshops because I think it is just explained so well what these microexpressions stand for and how to detect them. So as I said, there, there are seven altogether, anything from disgust to, to, to anxiety or fright uh, to disbelief and so on. And so what happens is, um, let's say I'm gonna use myself as an example, I hear something that I don't believe and uh, there's a subconscious um, um, reaction that makes my um, forehead frown like this, or, or, or uh, basically I shrink my eyes uh, in, in disbelief. And these are oftentimes um, reactions that last for a split second. So they're so short that you need to be really conscious and aware, um, and you need to look at the other person's face to detect them. They are subconscious, which means you cannot suppress them. Well, theoretically, you can suppress them if you do a lot of training, but most of us cannot. And the chances are that the people that you talk to also cannot suppress them. You can also not influence them in a way because they're subconscious. And so they are a fantastic giveaway to see if the person that you're talking to is actually still with you, still listening to you, uh, supports your idea, buys your idea, and so on and so on. And that's why um, I think it is an important aspect to consider in an interaction with other people, because ultimately what you want to do is you want to create a rapport, an interaction, some kind of relationship with the person. And if you don't realize that the person is in disbelief or the person has switched off or the person really doesn't, is not interested in you anymore because you are so, so focused on sending, and you basically go through a process whereby you, you send and you, you use a lot of energy, but you're actually not getting the, the desired impact, which is building a relationship or, um, uh, or networking with the person. Did I answer your question? Austin, uh, Frederick, just, just, um, just, just, I just would like to know if this micro-expression... Frederick, just a moment. Yeah. Did I answer the question? I forgot who asked the question. No, it was Inka. I didn't, I didn't see the name. I, actually, Vinka, yes. Actually, you did. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. very clear. No, I would like to know if these micro expressions uh, apply across various cultures. Yes, they do. Okay. So I have another question building on, on the micro expression. Um, when we are communicating without having visibility of the other person, can we then pick it up by the intonation and the speed of, of talking and so on? Or how, how is that? So, um, Maybe the, the term on this page should not be body language, but actually um, 
uh, nonverbal communication. That's my mistake. I should have explained that. So it's nonverbal communication. And the dimensions of nonverbal communication are body language, voice, and micro expressions. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, if you, uh, let's say, many, many first round interviews nowadays take place on the, uh, on a, uh, via video or even on the telephone. So if you, uh, if you have an interview or let's say a networking conversation on the telephone, of course, you are deprived of seeing, of kind of sensing the person uh, or at least the body. But what you have, of course, you have the voice that you're hearing. And um, there are so many, so many tricks and so many, let's say, giveaways in the voice. The thing is, if I'm um, using my example from before, if I'm so preoccupied in sending my information, if I'm so preoccupied in my left brain to try and formulate a, a good answer or good, some kind of good intro about myself and so on, I don't have enough attention to pick up on the subtle signals that exist in the voice of the other person. The, 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 the change in speed of the voice, the change in warmth, breaks, pauses, silences, and so on, and so on. The more I'm preoccupied with myself, the less I can understand what the other person is sensing and feeling, also via voice. Did that answer your question? It is very well. Thank you very much, Carsten. Awesome. Let's move on. Now, some of you who have worked with uh, von Rundstedt uh, will have heard us say that what we do basically is we we um, build a skill in our clients to self-sell. Now, this sounds like an awfully commercial approach, but in fact, that's what it is. And networking is obviously a vehicle that gets you there. 35% of all of our clients across all levels and functions and industries find the job via networking. And the higher you go in the hierarchy, the, the higher that percentage gets. So the senior executives actually find a job in 60% of cases via networking. Now, because this is a sales process and because you need to understand that um, uh, via networking or in an interview, you need to be not only uh, attractive in absolute terms, but you also need to be more attractive in, relevant term, uh, sorry, in relative terms compared to the other competitors that you have. We need to differentiate between um, what is called a cold call and a warm call. And we'll, we'll study this also uh, later on. Now, a cold call, um, is the most difficult sales process that there is. That means I want to interact, I want to network with somebody that I don't have any contact with currently. Or um, I'm, I'm in a networking event and then there's a, there's a, there was a presentation from some speaker and after the presentation, there's a net, uh, networking apéro, an apéro riche, and uh, I interact with a total stranger who, who happens to stand uh, over there in the corner at a coffee table with a glass of Prosecco and I join that person or two people. So this is a cold call. Or I want to talk to the HR person who um, is listed um, on, the, on the website as the go-to person for questions regarding that vacancy. Also, that's a cold call. That's very difficult. Whereas the warm call is a bit more easy. Let's say, um, um, Frederick, if I can use you as an example, uh, I know Frederick and I know Fabiola, uh, but Frederick doesn't know Fabiola. And I feel um, that if I were to connect Frederick and Fabiola, both of them would have a mutual benefit. So I connect them. And so what I do is I'm turning an otherwise cold call between Frederick and Fabiola into a warm call. So what they can do, they can basically now, in inverted commas, blame it on me. Um, because I have connected the two of them and uh, they, they can basically make reference to the fact that I introduced the two of them and that makes the conversation, at least the beginning of the conversation, much easier. So what we need to do is we need to understand what the difference between these two calls is and, and that's the last bullet point on this page, wherever possible we should try and turn the cold call into a warm call because the cold call is just very difficult and even more discomforting as a warm call. Which means, let's say, if uh, Frederick wants to get involved, uh, let's say, wants to get, get to know Fabiola because she works at von Rundstedt and she, she might have a, a job, whatever, or she might have a networking contact, and he, Frederick finds out that I know Fabiola, then he could call me or write to me and say, um, Carsten, could you do me a favor? Could you connect me with Fabiola because I see that you are uh, connected? Now, these things don't hurt. These things happen all the time. And if you, if you want to um, listen to my own personal trick, what I do every day 
four, five, six times every day. I meet people, you know, like, like, a, like a memory game that we used to play with, uh, when we were kids. Two cards with uh, similar images, like an image of a car and another image of a car, and uh, that's a pair. So I meet Frederick, I meet Fabiola, and I think, hmm, if I were to introduce these two people, they both would have a mutual benefit. Let me just do this. And so what I, what I have done um, as a matter of principle, I've done that for the last 10 years, I have a, I have a, I have a um, Word document with, I think, eight or 10 different one-liner or two-liner messages uh, that say something like, dear, whatever, Frederic and Fabiola, uh, I met both of you, I know both of you, and I believe that, uh, that you both um, have an interesting, uh, that you both have a, um, a relevant, sorry, what am I saying? That you would benefit if I, if I were to connect you, uh, happy networking. So I have eight or 10 of these messages. So what I do four, five, six times every day, not because I'm so great, just because I'm very systematic. I find people that I think should be connected. I go to my Word document. I, I copy one of those ready-made uh, sentences. I go to LinkedIn. I select Frederick. I select Fabiola. I paste the text and I press send. It costs me four seconds. And I do this again and again and again. So what this does, it, it, on the one hand, it turns cold calls into warm calls. But also what it does, it creates an incredible... Um, uh, churn in terms of um, networking context that I have because ultimately, in brackets, this is not the reason why I'm doing this, but ultimately, Frederick one day might actually reciprocate and say, hey, I met this guy uh, who might be an interesting contact for Carsten. And so he basically then starts connecting me to people that I don't know. Yeah. So this is, this is core in terms of cold call and warm call. Questions, comments? Am I making sense? I hope. Can we do it via LinkedIn as well or not? Sure. Like. Th that's my preferred tool. So again, I, as, I, as I said before, I go to LinkedIn, I select Frederick, I select Fabiola, and then I take my text, copy it into the, to the message box and press send. You and could so, share with us some examples, like three, four, like just for we kind of use as, as a template. <laughs> you you <laughs> mean messages? Yes. Like, sure. I think it so would be great. I, I could say, um, Dear, dear A, dear B, um, as you both work in the financial services industry in Switzerland, but you're not okay. yet connected, I believe that you would have a mutual benefit by being connected. Happy networking. Happy or, networking. I like that. Uh -huh. Thanks. Or I could, I could say, um, dear A, may I introduce you to B, uh, who has a background in ABC? Um, I believe that you will find the exchange mutually enriching Happy networking. Okay, I, I like the, the happy networking at the end. Sounds like interesting. People say, oh, okay, great. So I will accept. Thanks Does so much. Help? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Hello, okay. Karsten. It's Corinne. Hi, Corinne. Hi, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, well, I get this part and I find this part actually quite easy. I do it sometimes myself. Now, the, the difficult part for me starts right after that. What if you're person A or B and then what do you do? It's like you pick up the phone and you say, uh, hi, I got this lovely message from Karsten. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So I, I get, I get because, of, because of doing this all the time, I get, I don't know, maybe 40, 50, 60 uh, LinkedIn requests per week. Um, every time I get a LinkedIn request uh, to connect, I always accept and I always go back to my Word document. I have a ready-made sentence, which I then copy into the message, which I send back to the guy who wanted to connect with me. Dear, whatever, uh, dear A, thank you for connecting. How can I help you? And if the person then doesn't say anything, uh, no, no, it's fine. I just wanted to be connected with you. I delete again. But if the person has a request, yeah, I saw that you are connected with so-and-so. Could you help me? I, of course, try and help. That's point one. Point two. Now, I connect A and B. Now, um, either, um, either one should start to follow up. Let's say B could say, um, in, a, in, in responding to that same message on LinkedIn, thank you, Carsten, for putting me in contact with A. Dear A, it's a pleasure to virtually meet you. I realize I just saw your, um, your LinkedIn profile. Ind indeed, we have lots of um, I don't know, common interests or common backgrounds, or we, are, we both worked for UBS, don't know. Um, I would happily get on a Zoom call or a telephone call with you so we get to know each other better. Or if I want to introduce um, B, because B is looking for a job and I want to introduce B to A, 
I would say, um, blah, 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 um, I'm, I'm sure that you will find the, um, the uh, exchange mutual enriching. Dear B, may I leave it to you to contact A uh, to get in touch? And then of course you have to do it. The thing is also in a networking event, let's say I meet somebody at this uh, networking event um, that I just talked about. Yeah? There was a um, speech of somebody and then there's an apéro riche. And um, I, I, I go to a table, um, there's a person standing there with a glass of Prosecco and the, I don't know the person. So I go there and we have a chat. I'm gonna sh share, you, share with you how I would do this in a minute. And at the end, um, of course, you need to follow up. You need to make sure that you close the conversation and have a follow up, but we'll get to that in a, in a minute. Can I move on? Sure. It, it, may I just ask the group, is, this, is the speed okay? <laughs> Is the, uh, I have a tendency sure. to just speak fast. No, no, um, it's fine. Please stop me. It is good, yes. Yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. It's Carsten, fine. I would have a very quick question. You say sure. you, you're you accepting any connections on LinkedIn. Now it happens that I'm re getting a lot of people who are just trying to develop business and sell me something. Um, would you apply exactly the same uh, tactic? Yes, yes. So if, a per because you don't know, if the person really has an ask, maybe you can help. If the person just wants to sell, then I would, I would, again, first connect and then disconnect because you don't know. The thing is, I have, mm -hmm. I have basically run my networking activities for the last 10 years in the following way. I've, I always see networking opportunities um, in, the, in, in the way that there's always something we can do together. Maybe I don't know what we can do together, but there's always something. We just have to find it. So basically, it's a, it's a treasure hunt. And if you see networking that way, it's fun. And every person you meet is a potential, um, I don't know, a joker in your own network. Hmm. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, let's move on. Obviously, there are lots of, lots of opportunities to, to a network um, webinars like today, um, on social media, LinkedIn, what have you. The question is, in theory, these things are nice to know, but you need to do them. So, Let's, let me just ask the group, how often do you currently network? If you would say per month, just give us a number. How often times do you network with other people? You go to events, you contact people on LinkedIn. Let's just hear a few numbers. Who does this five times a month? Me. Every day, but not face to face anymore because of COVID. Okay, so five times every day or once every day. Five times a week. Five times a week. Who and does, who when does more? Job, than, sorry. Who does more than five times a week? I do because I'm job hunting, so I have to. Yeah. <laughs> so. How often? Yeah. How uh, often? Uh, three times a week. Because when you are job hunting, you are like checking where the people work, and then if you see some common uh, net, uh, contacts, and then you're networking. But I mean, only when you are looking for a job and when you're job hunting. That's what I usually do. Can you, can you share with us what you say when you network? Yeah, sure. Actually, I sent, um, basically, if I'm testing a position, I, I am, I'm applying for a position, and I see that some of my contacts uh, have like second or third uh, uh, connect, connection. And then what I, I usually write is, uh, I would love to be able to follow you, to, um, to follow you, to shamelessly use your resources, ideas, and information. And then people sometimes uh, answer, or, but that's the way that a network and also contacting the recruiters directly when it's available. That's um, what I'm doing. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So there are lots of opportunities. The thing is, you just need to do it. Um, being theoretical about networking doesn't work. You just need to do it either by going to an event or going to a virtual event or by writing to somebody or calling somebody or zooming to with somebody. You just need to do this. Um, in the interest of time, because I really want to do some role plays, um, there are ways to start a conversation. And I'm going to now just focus. Um, I have two pages where I would like to differentiate between a cold call and a warm call. The cold call only will focus on how to start a conversation, whereas the next page will look at the starting, maintaining, and closing a warm call. Now, the most important thing is um, that you understand what is it 
that you want to get out of the conversation. What is your ask? Very often I see that people um, prepare for these cold calls. Let's say they, um, they, they found the telephone number or the email address of the hiring manager of their dream job or the HR person who is the contact person for their dream job. So they call the person, but they don't really know what they want to get out of it. So, so they start talking and they lose track and they, at the end, they get no outcome, no results, and maybe worse still, they left a relatively bad impression. So it's really, really important to be, to be clear, what is it that I want to get out of that conversation? One thing, ideally one thing. So let's just, let me just role play with myself. Um, in a cold call, let's say I'm, I'm calling the line manager or the, the HR person of a dream job that, I'm gonna, uh, that I might apply for. So first bullet point says, repeat your name. The thing is, my name is Zuthoff. Well, most Swiss people call me Zuta because that's a Swiss name and that's what they think my name must be. I, so I learned that my name is difficult for Swiss to, um, to understand and also to repeat or to remember. So what I would do in a telephone conversation is the following. Good afternoon. My name is Carsten Zuthoff. Zuthoff. S-U-D-H-O-F-F. And then at the end of the conversation, I would say... I'm not sure whether you uh, heard my name correctly. My name was Carsten Zutov, Zutov, S-U-D-H-O-F-F, which means within a total of two and a half seconds, I've repeated my name six times. It doesn't mean that they will have remembered it. I'm just, I just have increased the chance that they did. Because ultimately, you want to make sure that your name sticks. So that's my first trick. Then I would say, may I get a minute of your time for a concrete question? because I know what my ask is, I know what, what, why I'm calling. And oftentimes when you have these people on the phone, um, typically they don't want to help you, they don't have time, um, maybe they're actually very busy. And so if you don't frame the conversation with things like, can I have a, a 30 seconds or a minute of your time? If you start talking, this might actually trigger a certain level of um, nervousness on their time because they have to go and they don't want to talk to you. And they will just basically say, listen, I can't talk. Um, I have to go now, goodbye. But if you say, can I get a minute of your, really only a minute of your time for a concrete question, it makes it increasingly difficult for the other side to say, well, not now. Yeah? So if you don't, if you don't frame the, 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 uh, the time perspective, you're increasing the chances that they will actually try and hang up. If they still want to hang up, even though you said, um, can I get a minute of your time for a concrete question? Uh, you could say, well, I understand if you don't have time now, can I call you later today at three o'clock? No? What about tomorrow at 10? Ah, what about Wednesday next week? So the idea is in, an, in, a, in a situation like this, in a networking conversation, or let's say in a situation where you want to actually get something from the person, where you want to sell something, the only goal of the salesperson is to sell. So you should not take no for an answer. Uh, and so by asking or suggesting more and more times to talk, you're making it increasingly difficult for the person to say, well, actually, you know what? I don't, I don't want to talk to you. It can still happen. But if you don't ask this, if you don't, let's say, give alternative slots, like today at three, tomorrow at 10, Wednesday at five, if you don't do that, you're minimizing your chance of actually getting through. I'll stop here and see what you think about this. Um, do I understand correctly? You make the proposals for the alternative time slots. So yes. you don't push the ball back and say, yes. um, do you have, can you give me another time when, you, when it's convenient for you? So that would be, be my, more on the polite, polite side. So this would be um, if, let's say, um, after two or three times and the person still says, well, today it's three doesn't work, tomorrow 10 doesn't work. And I say, okay, uh, could you give me a time that, uh, that suits your calendar? But in the beginning, I would kind of make it difficult to say no. Again, okay, this, is, this is how I would do it. Of course, you need to put this into your own uh, behavior. I know that um, many people will find what I'm just saying very uncomfortable. But I can tell you, it's the way to sell. And ultimately, what we're doing here is we are learning how to sell yourself successfully in the job market via networking. Correct? Thanks. Does that answer, did that answer your yes, question? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Other questions or comments? 
Uh, for me, uh, just a question would be, how would you find the right person to talk to, specifically if you're interested in a job? So I've worked in a big companies where they have many HR departments. I know I would like to get there, but to find the right person is, is really difficult. Is there anything that you can help with, Karsten? Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll come to that in, in, on two pages, uh, in two pages, I'm sorry. Um, one, one way to actually go uh, and expand your network is by asking people. So I'll give you one concrete example. Amongst others, I'm the president of the Global Entrepreneurship Network in Switzerland. We're the largest network of entrepreneurs around the world. And two weeks ago, we had what we call the Global Entrepreneurship Week. So a full week with uh, tens of thousands of events. And in Switzerland, we also ran a lot of events, obviously online. So for these events, I needed speakers and we needed participants and we needed topics. So I needed um, um, speakers. I needed uh, investors, entrepreneurs, um, nationalräte, politicians from different countries and so on and so on. I know a lot of people, but of course, I only know whom I know. So for instance, I would go to my colleague or my, my contact, Dov, who's from Israel. And I said, Dov, you know that I'm organizing this event uh, in a couple of months time. I would like to ask you if you know uh, a rock star entrepreneur from Israel who would be willing to talk to um, our audiences for free. It took him a couple of hours. He got back to me and I got one of the rock stars from Israel. So if I don't know the person myself, I go via people that I do know. Hmm? So if I want to access a certain company, uh, but I don't know anybody in that company, I, really, I think mm, who could, who could um, help me enter that company? And it's amazing. I mean, it's really amazing how often people that we have coffee with or that we meet, I don't know, at Migo or I don't know where, actually have contacts to the person that we're trying to get hold of. The thing is, we just don't ask. So one way, uh, sorry for the long wound ans uh, answer to your question, which I think is a very good one. One of, the, one of the ways to make sure you get to the point to the person that, you're, that you want to get involved with is by asking. And so a very concrete question could be, um, let's say you're meeting um, two, two clients meet at uh, the coffee machine at von Rundstedt office. One of you could say, uh, nice to meet you. Um, actually, I'm, I'm keen to be connected with whatever, um, Mr. X, Y, who is in the marketing department of UBS. Do you by any chance know that person? No, it could be that the, the other person says, nope, I don't know him, but I can, I can tell you more often than not, when we do these, these, um, these workshops, uh, we call that the act of giving. People say, yeah, actually, I do know that person. Or my husband or my wife plays golf with his, with his wife, whatever. The thing is, we don't ask. So what I would recommend is that you have a list of people that you would like to get in touch with. And basically, and I'm not exaggerating, wherever you go, you ask these questions. Oh, nice to meet you. Aha, uh -huh, you're also from Rundstedt. Aha, uh -huh, you're also in the tennis club, whatever. By the way, um, I'm, look, I'm interested in getting to know uh, Mr. XY in the marketing department of UBS. Do you by any chance know that person? It might sound a little very tough and very salesy. And of course, you have to package this into your own style. But I can tell you, I've done this for years and years. And I've taught this to I don't know, hundreds of people who have come back and said, you know what? This works. The thing is, we don't try. Did I answer your question? Yes, Carson, thank you. Let's Carson, move on. To, Carson, yes. I just have a very quick question. Um, when somebody connects you on LinkedIn, somebody you don't know and connects you without a message, would you reply back and say, uh, hi, yeah, thanks for the connection, you know, like basically and, and look for com common uh, grounds or because I, I receive those connections as well and Sometimes I accept and sometimes I, I just drag my feet or, 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 or I don't, you know, so. Yes, I would always, always, always accept and um, then go back and say, uh, thank, you for, thank you for your request to connect. Um, what can I do for you? Or you can say, um, as a general rule, I am happy to help, but I don't, just, I don't connect with people uh, that don't have an um, expressed need, depending on your style, depending on how you want to approach this. Again, that's what I do. I always accept and I always go back because I don't know, maybe this person has something interesting for me or maybe interesting for somebody else in my network. Again, I'm, what I, I play is this memory game. 
I meet two people and then I think, ah, if I were to connect those two people, they would have a mutual benefit. And then I just basically copy my message into LinkedIn and, and um, connect those two people. But if the person says, no, no, you know, I just wanted to be part of your network, then I typically disconnect. I don't, I don't like that. If you haven't asked to me, sure. Otherwise, no. Did that answer okay. your question? Okay. All right. Okay. So you can, you disconnect if the person that just wanted to, to connect with you because sometimes they just want to use your network as well. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to the warm call. As mentioned before, uh, what I want to do here is I'll share with you how to start, maintain and close a conversation. Again, first point is make sure that you know what you want to get out of a conversation. I said that before, but this is really, really, really key. Um, so let's say, um, in my example from before, um, Frederic and, um, and Fabiola, I have connected them. And then so Fabiola could reach out to Frederic or vice versa and say, it's a pleasure to be connected. Thanks to our mutual friend, so-and-so. So this is already um, a nice icebreaker. Or you can say, well, apparently Carsten sees something between the two of us uh, that is now for us to find out. Or um, it's great to be connected. Um, in, in fact, I studied your LinkedIn profile. We have a lot of common contacts. That's true. So Carsten probably uh, um, is, is right in connecting us. So you basically, you, you make reference to the person that connected you and that instantaneously gives a very different quality of the interaction. Suddenly you feel like you've known each other for years. Then you move on to the maintaining. So you need to ask a concrete question. You need to find out about that person. Again, we're doing this because we want to find a job. So we're not networking in a vacuum. We want to use networking to find a job. So it's less about talking yourself and more about asking questions, concrete questions. So let's say, Fabiola, sorry, Fabiola and, and Frederick that I'm using you as a, the, the example. I hope you don't mind me doing so. So Fabiola wants to um, find out where Frederick is or what he does. And could Frederick possibly be of, of support? Maybe he has a, um, works in a company that she is uh, interested in. Maybe he has other contacts and so on. So Fabiola would be well advised to ask a lot of concrete questions about the company and uh, aha, so you're working for this and that company. Um, interesting, I read about them, or what do you do? Uh, what keeps you up at night? I mean, whatever question. And then as you, as you listen to the other person talking about his or her company or his or her own career, maybe, try and find commonalities because what you want to do is you want to build a bridge between the two of you. Oh yeah, you, so you also traveled Africa on the motorbike or um, interesting, you worked for UBS like I did and then you also moved to Standard Poor uh, in New York and so did I, whatever. So you're finding commonalities and you will, you will see that these commonalities build a cohesion between the two of you that makes the relationship suddenly appear very strong. And then as you're listening to the person talk about his career or about his company, you kind of casually drop in a couple of your own accomplishments or professional aspects. For instance, if the person talks about um, a joint venture, you can say, yeah, yeah, um, I remember when Daimler and Chrysler merged uh, when I was there. Yeah, yeah, this was an interesting activity and I was actually involved in the projects, uh, the post-merge integration, blah, blah, blah. So you basically, you, you, you sprinkle some of your own accomplishments that fit to the current situation that the company is in that you're learning about. Or if the person, the networking contact talks about uh, expanding to China. You can say, oh yeah, well, between 2005 and 2008, I lived in China. That was a really interesting learning opportunity for me. So you're not actually selling yourself. It's more a matter of fact, a casual introduction of your own persona, of your own professional self. And so what this does is actually, it gives the person that you're talking to, not just the chance to talk about his himself or his own company, in brackets, everybody loves to talk about themselves, but also, um, he, might, he might find out um, some things about you. And if you're lucky and if you're doing it well, these things that you share become relevant. Carsten, I just have a question. It's Carmen. Hi, Carmen, hi. Hi. So, you know, uh, when you're networking, you're not actually looking, you're not sort of asking for a job, correct? Yes. Um, but can you let on that you're looking for a job because that's always i've 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 always refrained from doing that because i didn't want to 
try and sell myself in that way but i think but then you know yeah so my question is can you let on that you're looking for a job or are you do you need to stay away from that so i would always argue against asking the person hey do you have a job for me because yeah. as, I, as i argued before this is typically sure. an overwhelming question but what you can say is well you know after whatever five years at swiss Re, um, I'm now moving on and um, you work for UBS and UBS is one of my target companies. I would love to learn more about UBS because, you know, I've been following UBS for a number of years, but you know, from an outsider point of view, it's always a bit difficult. So I would just like to learn more. I mean, you've been there now for 10 years. Would okay. you share with me what UBS is actually all about? Okay. People love to talk about themselves and they love to talk about their companies. And if you don't ask them to find a job, well, yeah. they're just going to talk about the job. And then comes now, this is the, the last part. Um, I, I hope I answer your question. Yeah, thanks. So in, in, in terms of closing, um, let's say if you have met in a, um, whatever, in a networking event or online, you can say, well, would you accept my LinkedIn invitation? Or shall we continue this conversation over lunch? So following up. Plus, now these are my f uh, four favorite questions. You could ask, do you think that someone with my background would fit your company? And then there are two possible um, answers. If yes, whom else should I speak to? And could you possibly connect me? Sorry, there's an end missing. Could you possibly connect me? Or if no, what would you need for me to feel comfortable to connect me with other people in your network? And finally, the fourth question, which I think is the most powerful question ever, what can I do for you? Now, if you remember back to the very first page of this, of this presentation, uh, networking is all about giving. Now, if you ask the question, what can I do for you? This is so, so, so powerful. Typically, people will say, wow, thank you. Oh, that's very nice of you. I mean, wow, nobody has asked me that before, ever. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I can't think of anything now, but really, thank you for asking. Is there something I can do for you? And you say, well, actually, I just wanted to offer because, you know, I love to network and I wanted to see if there's anything I can do for you. So this, I, you can also start, that, start a networking conversation um, with that. For instance, I'm going to go back to Fabiola and Frederick. Uh, Fabiola could say, uh, Frederick, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Thanks to our mutual friend, Carsten. Um, I see that we both uh, used to work for UBS. Is there anything that I could do for you? So this question lifts the conversation to a totally different level. Suddenly, you appear as a giver. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should do this in order to get something because that would turn you into a matcher. That's not what I'm saying. But by asking that question, you instantaneously change the dynamics of the conversation. I'll stop here and see if you have any questions. Carsten, can you hear me? Yes. Um, can I ask you a quick question about a case, a very, very specific case I have? Sure. Um, but I'll, I'll go as quickly as I can. So I, I got introduced through a mutual friend to uh, a senior person doing exactly the type of job that I'm looking for, um, but he's at an even more senior level. We had a one hour conversation um, and we sort of spoke about everything and I didn't actually get a chance to talk about everything that I wanted to speak to because we kept sort of, it was an extremely friendly exchange, right? Um, and we sort of came to an end quite suddenly. I then sent a follow up a uh, message asking, you know, could, could we follow up this conversation? And he didn't come back to me, right? And that was about over a month ago. I have his mobile number, right, because of the initial exchange. And I'm thinking of calling him up directly on his mobile phone, right? Yes. So I, there are several possibilities for this. The first one is uh, what you have just said. What can I do for you? You know, obviously introducing the conversation, saying, you know, we spoke, et cetera, hope everything's well. So my, my question could be, what can I do for you? Or when I look on his network on LinkedIn, I see that he's connected to other people, of, you know, within the company who would, it would be great to, to, to talk to them as well. So that's another way I could approach it is to say, you know, we, we spoke, you know, it was clear, et cetera, that I, I, I'm looking for a job, that it was completely transparent, all of that. Could you connect me to some of the people in the company? What would you recommend if I, if I call him up on his mobile? What should my approach be? I would try and be very specific with one concrete ask. Because the more, the more um, 
let's say the more asks you have, the more fuzzy the conversation gets. And then to my, to my point on question three, I'd say, uh, well, um, we, we had this great conversation a couple of weeks ago. Um, we introduced each other, but I, I would understand if you still didn't feel comfortable enough to introduce me to Mr. So-and-so that I would like to get in contact with. What would you need to feel comfortable? You know, I have all these references that, are, that, that would be happy to, to speak about me and so on. So I want you to feel comfortable enough. Okay. Oftentimes people would say, you know what, that's not necessary. I mean, we, we had a good conversation. I'll, I'll happily introduce you. But by saying it, what you do basically is you are, you're showcasing the fact that you are a professional networker and that you understand that people might have a certain, um, uh, how do you say, um, wor worry yeah. to, introduce, to introduce people that they don't really know very well. Right. So this, this, this is one way I would do it. Um, and um, you, of course, the question, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Is always a good one. Right. So that sort of could be a second one, starting with what would make you feel comfortable to connect me with one or two other people in the company? I would give their name. Yeah. And I guess that gives him an opportunity to ask me for something. Well, in yes. order for me to feel more comfortable, could you give some more detail on what you have done in a specific area? Yeah. Right. Okay. And then and there's yeah. another, Charles, there's another point here. Now, um, when we introduce ourselves to other people, and again, we at von Rundstedt train the 90 second pitch, we train interviewing capabilities, we train obviously a lot of things, all things that are related to finding a job. Oftentimes when we introduce ourselves to other people, we use um, certain uh, nomenclature or company or industry specific terminology, or we tend to speak in long wound complex paragraphs. Now, the thing is, if you want to make sure that this person that you need, where you need the help of, that this person can actually uh, help you, you need to be able to ammunition him, to give him the kind of material about you that he can then go and sell on your behalf. Right. Which means you need to be very specific about who it is that you are, what you've accomplished. Because otherwise, if you give a lot of, let's say, a cloudy, uh, fuzzy um, uh, summaries of who you are, what you've done, where you've worked, and that you, I know, you, you collect stamps and you've lived in, I know, um, yeah. in Central Switzerland. It's too confusing. Mm -hmm. so what you need to make sure is that you are really rock solid on the messaging that you share so that this other guy can then use that information on your behalf and help you. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you very much. So, does it help? Yeah, absolutely. Great. Let's move on. So we have 20 more minutes. What I would like to do, um, we need two volunteers. Um, maybe we we'll even have a chance to do this more than just once before we close for Q&A. What I would like to have here is two volunteers, people who don't know each other, who meet, let's say, in a networking event and who role play in front of all the other people online, how they would introduce themselves and the goal is, I don't know whether you actually see this, um, whoops, sorry. Yeah, can't read my own page here. Uh, I would like you to spend three minutes and try and get as much out of the other person as possible. Sell yourself like this, um, this casual sprinkling of chocolate on the, on the cake, as I, as I said before. Um, and the others would listen and would then provide feedback. And I know this is a heavily out of comfort zone experience. My experience is also that people, we do find volunteers to do so. So I need two people. And um, I then want to make sure that the, uh, the goal is clear or the, the, the action is clear. So who would like to go? I can. Seems to be a very shy crowd. I can do so too. Yeah. Great. Carsten and... Sorry, Mette. that was... Mette. Okay. Thank you so much. This, um, I, I totally appreciate this because this is out of comfort zone. So you, you both um, pretend that you meet, let's say on an... On, let's do this real because it's an online uh, conversation. Um, and um, maybe... Um, Okay, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to ask you to do this 
as if you were as if this were the follow up of today's webinar. So you met today, you've, you've seen each other's names, um, you both went to the same webinar, and now you basically want to connect and, and network. You just take it from here, um, and the idea is to get as much information from the other person and also sprinkle a few aspects um, of who you are in three minutes, and then we'll provide feedback. Take a half, a, take a, no, no, 10 seconds uh, to, to think of an ask. Do you have an ask? Point one, point two, Play around with this very powerful question, what can I do for you? And you're good to go whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Me too. Okay. Hi, Carsten. Uh, my name is Meta. I think you are in the same uh, webinar today about networking. Correct. I definitely think so too. Yeah. Great pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Can I ask you something? Sure. Your, your surname, where is that from? I cannot really place it geographically. Actually, I can't do either. Um, <laughs> I see. It, it's a, I, I, I grew up with it, so I actually don't really know where it comes from. Uh, but I never, nevertheless, I grew up in northern Germany. So oh. the name doesn't point at that, but this is where I'm originally yeah, from. Yeah. I grew up in, uh, in Denmark, so that's oh. not far from it. So this is actually what they call us within Germany. This is kind of the, the outpost of Denmark. So it's yeah, sure. <laughs> fantastic. And I think my, my name points toward that because my, my middle name is Meta, which is very common in Denmark. Here we go. What, what brought you to Switzerland then? Uh, initially jobs and, and then, you know, I felt very much at home here. What about you? Uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, I actually got twice introduced to Switzerland, one, once with, a, with a, a, a small job, and then I actually even got married in Switzerland. But then I ventured off into, the, into, into North America for quite a, quite a while um, oh, really? just to find another job back in Switzerland. So, Where were you in North America? Because I spent time there too. That Canada. So I uh, had actually 11 years um, in that lovely country. Okay. I spent three years in New Jersey, right oh, next okay. to New York. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I've spent actually a lot of time during my time in Canada and the U.S. because that's obviously where the business is. Yeah. So, so what business are you in? Um, uh, consumer goods, durable consumer goods is what I really do. I've okay. done a lot of things in watches and in knives and in suitcases and backpacks, everything which is kind of on the premium to luxury side, what we surround ourselves with. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of also in consumer goods, but not the kind of luxury nice things as you are, but I'm a bad person of those. I'm on food. On food? Ah, I think there are a lot of, lot of luxury and premium things in food, which are also extremely intriguing. <laughs> yeah, I think we can have a lot of exchange on that one. Um, I was wondering about something, you know, um, I'm out of job right now. Do you have any good ideas about where to, to place my pension? Because I need to take that out of the company where I've been working. Um, I actually probably not, don't have a lot of good advice because I've only heard that same happening to me now, um, that there are, I guess, general accounts where you can just park it until the, I guess, the next opportunity comes around. And if it's in Switzerland, it just goes back into into the pension plan of your new company. And if it's outside the, uh, the, 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 the country, it, you have to take it out anyway. Yeah, I know that. I have a, but I plan to stay in Switzerland, so I think it's going to stay here too. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you very maybe, much. Maybe because um, I'm obviously um, in a similar position and um, I'm, I'm trying to, um, to, to get to some people, um, just due to your your setup within food do you have actually any contacts to nespresso that's a bit um, the, i would call I, it I the crossover I, I do have some i must say <laughs> i used to work for nestle uh, but not in the coffee business um uh, and i have more connections to andy but I do know the guy who used to head up the, the R&D center for Nespresso too. He's retired now. Oh, that will be, could you introduce me to him? 
because this is, for me, this is a very intriguing setup because it is obviously food, but it's super premium. It's so nicely played on the, on the branding side. And it has a lot of community building to it because obviously it doesn't sell if there's not gadgets and the coffee and all those things. And they just did such a, such a beautiful job in, in creating this business model. Uh, it would be very intriguing to talk to that person. Sure, I can probably um, introduce you to him on LinkedIn. That's not a problem. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, and uh, he's actually quite a good friend of me, so no problem. Yeah. Excellent. Is there anything I can do for you? Uh, I don't know. Do you know a lot about, um, do you have any contacts in the food business at all? Chocolate, maybe? Um, I can try to dig up maybe somebody from Lind and Springley. Um, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not deep in that at all, but I know that um, you, to my Canadian times, we had kind of all the European co companies were kind of networking there in a, in a more intense way. So I can look if I can find somebody. Yeah, I like that. I think actually personally that the Lindt chocolate is one of the world's best chocolates. It's the smoothest. Let's come to a close. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I'll drop an email to you and uh, Anders too, and then you can connect. Perfect. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Awesome, guys. This, this was amazing. Thank you so much for doing it. And um, my question to both of you would be, how was that? How did you feel? Fine. Lovely. Comfortable. <laughs> Isn't it? Awesome. Person is very easy to talk to. Uh, you are too, by the way. I get you know, from Denmark, so that's... To be expected anyway. Thank you. But, but uh, let's say um, um, on, the, on the content side, what did you get out? What, did it, what was it that you wanted to get out of it? What did you get out of it? And how basically, um, what was your, your logic to get towards your goal? I guess it was in the beginning, it was more the warm up to get the, the commonalities and get a, get a, I guess, a certain level of comfort. Um, about where we both come from. Um, I had to shift gear a little bit because I actually wanted to ask for a different person. But when you told me that's about food, where you're coming from, um, I, I'm also working on a pitch for obviously Nespresso. So this mm -hmm. obviously, obviously was closer to where you are, uh, where you have your network. So um, I switched gears and went for that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my strategy was to build up um, a different kind of uh, connection that's a little bit more um, longer in the perspective. Um, so that was why my question was not something where I expected a, an answer right away, but a more where um, I saw an opportunity for maybe continuing a, an exchange because obviously we both have to kind of place the pension money somewhere. Why did you ask that question? Well, because this is, um, Right specifically, I was putting up an account today with one company and suddenly I felt a little bit overwhelmed with all the questions and decisions they wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and then I decided that I'm just going to shut it all off and either they come back to me with a better answer or I do it with my bank. Okay. And, and that's was my, um, my dilemma of today, so to say. Okay. <laughs> that was why I asked it. So, so what, what we saw here, um, the whole thing lasted four and a half minutes. So within four and a half minutes, you can basically got quite a lot done. So networking doesn't have to take hours and hours. Um, if, you, if you know questions or let's say the, know how to enter a conversation, you know um, how to basically ask for something specific. Within four and a half minutes, both of you got contacts. Um, so there's, there's um, an easy way to make use of a fresh contact in four and a half minutes to get something that is useful. In the interest of time, I'd like to ask the rest of the, the group um, about maybe one or two comments about what you saw, what you liked, what you um, might actually want to take on for your own. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to ask something very quickly as well. So Carson, I think, was uh, the first person to switch the question to do you know anybody in, I think it was the coffee business, is that correct? Yes. Uh, and then uh, that conversation continued. And then uh, Christine, she asked the question later on, 
do you know anybody in the food business, right? Yeah. So what? Um, so for me, it was all perfect. But I'm just wondering about those two specific questions um, because I found them quite broad. I would tend to be much more specific in what I'm looking for. I would tend to, do you know somebody doing finance transformation shared service, which is what I do, right? I, 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 I don't sort of ask the questions on a broader basis, but now I'm thinking maybe I'm wrong because by asking the question on a broader basis, you're sort of throwing the net wider. So I, I'm just wondering what your recommendation on that would be, Karsten. It doesn't, really, you... matter. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the, the, as long as you ask the question, hmm? whether it is specifically about an industry or a company or a person, it doesn't really matter. Maybe you don't know a, the, the exact person in a target company, so you're just gonna ask for any contact in that company. Maybe you don't even have a preferred company because you're just generally interested in industry, so you ask about your contact in that industry. But do me a favor and ask the question. Yeah. But isn't it also important to, to not ask too specific questions? Because if it's a very specific question, it's very easy to get a no. Uh, like I did with the pension, um, but if you open uh, ask an open question, then you also take all kind of levels of answers, so to say. So what, what I what I would do, I would still go after, let's say, one specific name, Mr. So and So at UBS's marketing team, whatever. Okay, and if you get a no, well, at least you've tried it. But again, believe me, I've seen this hundreds of times where people say, "Yeah, actually, I know that person." So if you don't ask that specific question, you will never have, you will never know if that person might have given you that contact. If the person says, you know what, I don't know Mr. X, Y in the marketing department of UBS, you can still say, well, do you know anybody at UBS? Or do you know anybody at the financial services industry? But I would start, let's say, on the, on the micro level with a specific name. Okay. If you feel uncomfortable with that, you can just say, well, do you know anybody at UBS? Again, it's, it's, it's your personal style. I have a question, this is Patricia. Uh, first, let me, make you, uh, let, let me make you a compliment about how you did it. I really enjoyed it. Um, one of the things that came into my mind um, about thinking, what if I was there? Would I give any of my network contacts to one of you? And I don't mean that in person, but I had no clue um, what you were looking for. And that was one of the things um, I'm always a bit hesitating to use my network to people that I really don't know or hardly know. So um, my question is, what would you advise, Carson? Uh, is it safe to do it? Or um, should we ask more questions in the direction, what are you looking for? So that you have a more precise picture of what a person is looking for and maybe doing with your contact. So very good question, Patricia. Thank you very much. So what I would do is, let's say, if you were to ask me uh, to give you, uh, um, to, let's say, to connect you with my contact at UBS, I would say, sure, I can do that. Would you mind sending me maybe a two or three bullet points, really just a short summary of who you are, so I can introduce you. So when, when, when we at Van Rundstedt introduce clients to target companies, we never send the CV because we know nobody will read the CV. What we will do is we will send um, whatever, one sentence or two sentence, or let's say a bullet point. Dear, dear uh, contact at UBS, I would like to introduce you to Patricia. She is a, now bullet point one, bullet point two. Would you be interested in having a networking conversation with her? Again, you need to make it as easy for the other side as possible. You need to preempt all the possible reasons why the other person might say no, because it's a sales process. The good salesperson kind of knows all the possible obstacles or, um, or uh, how do you say, um, uh, reasons to escape on the other side. The more often you do it, and that's why uh, networking is, uh, is such a, a cool, uh, um, cool capability, because the more often you do it, like taking piano, the better you get, because you've heard all the answers, you've seen how people react or, or counteract, and so because you've done that so many times, you then know how to basically uh, focus your sentences and, and, uh, and progress. Did I answer your question, Patricia? Yeah. Thank you. So basically what we are going to try to is we're going to make it as easy as possible for anyone to, to say yes to what we're asking for. Sure. Where it, it, we are going to make it as possible as 
possible, no, as difficult as possible to say no. Correct. Correct. Yeah. W without, without, of course, appearing uh, difficult as a person and without trying to, uh, uh, without wanting to appear pompous or suffocating and so on. So, I mean, you, you both of you started the conversation with a little joke. That's great. Yeah. So yeah. that's why it's so important to, to think about the call before you pick up the phone, before you dial in on Zoom or before you go to a networking event. What is it that I want to get out of it and how will I start the conversation? Mm -hmm. Let me just see. So, Patricia, you asked the question, building and keeping contacts. Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at the time now. Um, now, this is, I think we've touched upon it um, a bit. Mm, the important piece is, of course, once you have established contact, let's say this networking event that you follow up, that you, on the, on the, the second day, sorry, on the networking event, you, you say something like, uh, would you accept my LinkedIn invitation? You know, makes it difficult for the other person to say, hey, no way, I'm not going to link up with you. Uh, could happen, but it's not very likely. So then you send a LinkedIn invitation and you write a little message there, whatever. It was nice to meet you yesterday. I would I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, can we have coffee or shall we have lunch? Uh, I'd like to, I don't know, continue our conversation. And then you need to make, you need to write a message because otherwise if you just link, you might, you will surely forget who that person was, where you met and why that person was interesting. If you don't do anything um, within the, let's say the first couple of 72 hours. You need to follow up. Yeah. So Patricia, I hope that took, this took, um, um, uh, took care of your question. Yeah. Then Michaela, you. You, you asked about pleasure and purpose of networking. Mm, I think it is both. Um, it is fun to interact once you've basically gotten rid of your own uh, worries or inertia, what have you. It's two human beings meeting. And as long as you don't think that you are a beggar, not you, Michaela, just you in general. If, as long as we don't think that we are a beggar because we're asking for something, if you realize that this is actually what networking is all about, giving and taking, then actually you can, you can turn an otherwise uh, dry interaction into something very pleasurable, pleasurable or, or purposeful. Um, then obviously, Simone, you asked about uh, not being welcome to ask for a job. I think I answered that question. Don't ever go directly say, um, thank you, um, nice to meet you, I'm looking for a job, do you have a job for me? Because that question is too big. But if you ask about the person's career and the person's company that he's working in, and then you kind of sprinkle in your little, uh, some anecdotes and some facts and, and um, relevant aspects, that's, that's just good enough. And you can say, well, I'm, I'm on, a, on a move to a new, new job now and your company is one of my target companies and I would like to learn from you. Thank you so much for sharing some of the insights with me. I think that takes care of that. I hope that answered your question, Zimona. Um, Hassan, I think you had the same question about from, from uh, asking to find a, find a job. I hope I, I'm not misquoting you here. Then, Rana, you asked about networking virtually. I think we saw how this works between uh, Mette and Carsten just now. It is, if not easier, um, it's at least as easy as networking in a physical space. Again, you just need to do it. But we saw that within four and a half minutes, you can get a lot of stuff done and actually create a real symbiosis, a real kind of relationship. Again, this was, of course, a warm call scenario. And my argument before that was to try and make a otherwise cold call turn into a warm call. Otherwise, it's uh, just a bit more difficult. Um, then keeping the contact during a job. I think that's, that's the point of Mark. It fits to Patricia's point, building and keeping contacts. Um, many people make the mistake that they network intensively when they're looking for a job and when they're back in the job, they forget that. Mm, networking is not just to find a job and you need to actually maintain it over time. Uh, otherwise, you will lose traction and uh, you might actually appear as a, as a matcher, which is not something that I would recommend. I hope that answers your question, Mark. And finally, uh, Dorota, I think I answered your question very much in the beginning. Um, I get a prize for speed talking. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Let me, just, let me just summarize and then uh, happily take some more questions. So takeaways, prepare your pitch. You need to know um, what you're going to ask for and you need to know, know what you want the other person to remember about you. Uh, you need to ask um, before you network. Be sure that you follow up from your networking interaction with this networking, uh, sorry, LinkedIn connection or an email or something because otherwise you will just forget who that person was. The person will forget who you are and then you have another connection on LinkedIn, but you, it, it serves no purpose because you just can't remember who that person was. 
Before you go to a networking uh, event, um, or if you want to reach out to somebody who is critically important for your networking, you need to make sure that your social media messaging is correct. Because the chances are that the person who has met you at a networking event or, or uh, in, a, in a call will later on check you out on LinkedIn. And if the message on LinkedIn doesn't correspond to what you said before, it doesn't make a very good impression. Think about what you can give to your contacts. That, that's my question. How can, I, how can I help you or what can I do for you? And finally, uh, you might also want to start thinking about your own brand, your own thought leadership. So what is it that you want to become known for in your, in your networking node? But this actually goes further than we have time for today. If you're interested in talking to me about how to develop yourself as a thought leader, uh, um, of course, I'll be there. I'll stop here and I'll happily take a few more questions before we close. Guys, that's calm. And I just have one more question. So what if um, sort of you, you start um, a conversation with someone in your network, um, but then suddenly they ghost you? Um, I know everyone's busy, but how many times would you follow up before you just leave it? It happens, it happens regularly, unfortunately, because, again, my argument from the, from the beginning of the session was that most people I meet uh, don't know how to network. 90, whatever, 8% of people don't know how to network. So they feel overwhelmed when they get asked. And maybe that's not ill intention, but they just don't know what to do. Or um, it doesn't rank very high on their to-do list. And that's why it kind of falls off the to-do list. So try once, try twice, and maybe a third time. <clears throat> and rather than just going back and saying, uh, can, we, can we speak next week? And can we speak next week? And can we speak next week? Give something. Um, dear networking contact, um, sorry, we, we didn't connect last week. By the way, uh, since, since we first talked two, two weeks ago, I met um, Frank, who is an interesting person who might be uh, also an interesting contact for you. Um, may I connect the two of you? Or, um, dear networking contact, thank you for our conversation a couple of days ago. Uh, by the way, I just um, stumbled across this article, which I think was uh, relevant, uh, might be relevant to you, or it fits to the conversation we had. Happy reading. So basically, you, you give something of relevance, and you're making it increasingly difficult for the person not to come back. Again, there's no guarantee because some people just don't know what to do in networking, but you're making it increasingly difficult to come back. Mm -hmm. I hope that answered your question. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else? One question, Michaela speaking. Yeah. Uh, once the network starts becoming wide, what's a good rhythm to maintain contacts? Because it, it, it starts being quite it can start being heavy, maintaining regular contact with a huge number of, of, of networking partners. Yeah, so the thing is, um, you don't have to be uh, in, in touch with all, whatever, five, 6,000 people that you have on LinkedIn every day. Obviously, that doesn't work. But what you can do, um, you can post something or like something or share something on LinkedIn, for instance, to, to do that. Once in a while, you just, I don't know, some people send Christmas cards to, to an inner circle. Then again, once you have connected, and maybe you have spoken um, with the individual on the phone, so you've established some kind of closer relationship, it's okay if you don't touch base more than once a year. Okay. It's also okay if you maybe don't come back uh, in two years. But I would try and make it a, some kind of a routine and go through my LinkedIn list or my, I have my own CRM tool at home um, and go through and say, oh, I haven't contacted him for a long time or Again, the, the way I approach this is to, to, when I meet people and say, ah, this person could benefit from meeting that person. So even though I don't actually write to the person and, and ask for any favor, I provide something of relevance to them, which is good enough. Which is good. And the second question is, so um, I was not that strategic in building up uh, a LinkedIn network uh, um, in, over time and over the years. So now there are a lot of contacts that I actually don't know. So is there anything wrong in deleting them? I don't think, I don't think there's a reason to delete them. I mean, if they, have been, if they have been in your network for the last, whatever, three years dormant, yeah. keep them. Okay. Again, so what, what, I, what I do regularly, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn and um, I'm coming back to this memory game that I've now referenced um, four or five times. It is such a powerful thing. So maybe you have never actually talked to the person He's been in your network for the last two years dormant, but you suddenly realize he works in a company that your neighbor, your friend, or your other, somebody else that you would like to get in contact with. Or you just basically just connect to people because you think they could benefit from it. So you can turn a dormant contact 
into an active contact just by connecting him or her with other people. Okay. Again, the, the more you do it, so if I connect two people that I'm in, on first level with on LinkedIn, who otherwise would be uh, on their respective level two or even level three, I'm turning that, that connection for them into a level one connection. If I do this oftentimes, and I shared this just in the beginning of the web, uh, webinar, if I do this often enough, the chances are is that people will reciprocate and that they will introduce me to other people that are maybe in my level three contacts that I otherwise I don't have contact with or access to. Okay. And again, I've done this not because I'm so great, just because I'm very systematic. Mm -hmm. I've done this for the last 10 years and that's why I'm in contact I don't know, with dentists and actors and pilots and people that otherwise I would never get in contact with. Mm -hmm. Of course, with entrepreneurs and investors, but that's the world I live in anyway, or business people and CEOs, but it's the, 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 the other people that I otherwise wouldn't get in contact with, but that might be actually very relevant because they might have content that is interesting for me, or maybe they have a, a connection that might be relevant for me or for somebody in my network. Okay, thank you. One, more, one last question. And then we close. Can I, can I quickly make it uh, one question that has two parts? Is that acceptable, okay, Kasi? Sure. sure. So j just, to, just to quickly build on um, what was discussed about number of LinkedIn contacts, um, I would confess I've got too many. Therefore, because I've got too many, I don't think I'm actively using them and, and leveraging them for them and for myself. So I, I feel as if I'm a kleptomaniac. I've got, I've got a garage full of contacts that are dormant. And I'm moving more towards being a little bit more hard faced about it to say, okay, if they can help me and I can help them keep them, if not, just delete them because otherwise it just becomes, uh, it seemingly an exercise in, uh, just collecting contacts like Instagram followers. It, does that sound logical to you in terms of being a little bit harsh in terms of contacts? Well, my, my, the question before that was similar. And my argument was, um, if they have been in a network for the last couple of years, even if they were dormant, it doesn't hurt you. So I would keep them because you never know, maybe in two years time, something comes your way uh, where you might actually want to connect with that person or reconnect with that person. So go, going at length to skim through your network and then take people out. If you have enough time, well, you can do that. There's no reason not, not to do it other than, well, hoping, expecting that maybe one day you might very well benefit from that connection. Okay. And then, then the second part, which maybe is uh, more simple in terms of if you were making this presentation pre COVID when it was less of a digital world where we can actually have face to face human contact, and we could have this uh, famous Prosecco that you were talking about or wine or whatever, which doesn't seem to be the case now and for the foreseeable future. Would you change anything in what you've said today in terms of networking? Nothing. I built a company um, with um, partners in Silicon Valley. Um, I, have a, I have a, actually I call him a friend. His name is Pete. He lives in San Francisco. I think that I have spent probably three months net on Skype with him. I've never met him in person. He was introduced to me, by the way, by Adam Grant, the, the guy, um, the author that I mentioned um, in the beginning. So I think you can do a lot. You can even build companies with people that you've never met before in person. Thanks a lot. Very good. Thank you very much. This was a, a very lively interaction. I hope that you took something of, of use out for, today, for yourself. Um, again, we, we, uh, we do this um, for about a thousand clients per year across all levels, functions and industries teaching them uh, what positioning is, what, how to story tell and how to network. Uh, if you are interested in the, in the services, uh, we'll, again, we'll come back to you via email with this um, link to the micro expressions video. Plus, of course, um, maybe most, more information about uh, what we do as Van Rundstedt. Um, I'd like to thank all of you. There was a big group. I want to thank you for the interaction, for the lively questions, and um, particularly uh, Metin Karsten for being so gutsy to be, be the, um, the guinea pigs in a live role play today. Thank you very much for your attention and um, hope to see you at some other event, uh, either in person or virtually. Have a good afternoon and goodbye. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks. Great pleasure. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was very good. Thank Bye. You. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.
ปรับดูแล้วปรับดูแล้วลูกยาวยาวโมเมนต์ลิซเซียไปปั๊ด